Hello and welcome to everyone. New Zealand Prepper here. If you are new, consider liking and subscribing. Now, before we get into it today, you need to understand the purpose of this channel is to help you to get prepared. This includes keeping you informed with what I see going on. And so in keeping with this today, we are going to look at some recent worldwide developments as well as some local stuff. And also we will take a look at the economy and specifically war economy and where, I, where we sit as a nation. We are going to look at what legislation has and hasn't been dropped with the ending of the COVID restrictions here and what you should be doing now to prepare. On this channel I do not advocate violence or civil unrest. My aim is for you to get prepared. You will not agree with me on everything and that is okay. I encourage you to do your own research and make your own conclusions. What I say here is what I see from my perspective. But please understand my views and opinions are not an attack on yours. Also. I am not a financial advisor, so if I recommend doing something with your money, it's because I believe it would be wise, but you really have to choose for yourself. Okay, so what we are going to do first today is go through some of the developments from around the world. Firstly, Russia has called for a mobilization of its military. Our media is downplaying it and saying it is a partial mobilization, but I believe otherwise. It is a draft, essentially, of all Russian military and their reservists, which basically is everyone, because I believe they still have mandatory military service. For men aged 18 to 27, military service is mandatory, and so when now there is a mobilization this means that the russian armed forces can effectually mobilize to whatever their male population allows them to next we have the concept of war economy a war economy is where you mobilize the population to produce everything you need to prepare for war in the case of russia this is not hard they have the level of control over the population to do this quickly and efficiently and I suspect they have been transitioning companies into this for quite some time. Next we have China. Their warnings to America about Taiwan are increasingly becoming more dramatic. It would not surprise me one bit if when America deploys against Russia further, China moves to enforce its control over Taiwan. At that point, the front will begin to open up and the lines that have already been drawn will become a lot clearer. Over in Europe, their energy crisis is deepening. Germany's economy is collapsing, moving into major hyperinflation. The cost, of, the cost of energy is skyrocketing, causing the cost of everything to go up dramatically. At the same time, the value of the euro is falling, which is compounding the issue. When Russia said, if you want natural gas back, finish Nord Stream 2 pipeline, and Germany said no, they should have recognized that things were going to be especially bad. Now they have said they are going to deploy military to the streets in October as looting and robbery and violence has intensified there, and of course it has. So you can only push the people so far. Once you're over the tipping point where you have the energy costs and food costs that are just so high that you have to choose between warmth and food, this was just inevitable. It may sound harsh, but they needed this, otherwise there is no chance of mobilizing any military at all. In the last wars, the only people that had regular food in general were the soldiers, and so young men would go to war just so they could eat. Without the depression and strangling effects on the population, people would just refuse to fight. And that is one of the reasons I see that the level of detriment to our ways of life is spreading across the West. The so-called leaders know people do not fight unless they have to. And this is why we are seeing the manufactured wholesale destruction of our current way of life. Here in New Zealand, we have seen crime start to skyrocket. We have seen the stories start to run out of uh, the stores start to run out of items. First, there was a limit on how many you could buy. Now, things simply are not available, and things that are are going up in price way more than what is being reported. 
A few days ago I saw something on Reddit which is very telling. RBI. No, not reserve bank inflation, but real bakery inflation. And I have seen it too. A pie that was $4.20 a few months ago is now $5.20. A donut that you used to be able to get in a lunch combo uh, is now $4.50 by itself. And the combo that was $9 for a pie, a can of Coke and a donut is now $12. Landlords are trying to increase their rents because mortgage rates are increasing and the interest rates are going up. And the conservative estimate for peak OCR is now 4.75% by this time next year. But it's not going to be enough. We are going to see the OCR go up somewhere near 8 to 10%, I believe. And this and that is just because real bakery inflation is close to 25% or more even. While we are talking about inflation, I want to go into why we have inflation, what's causing it, and who is to blame. By now, you should all understand there are many different forms of inflation. We have RBI, or Reserve Bank Inflation, or Real Bakery. We have CPI, Consumer Price Index, and the PPI, the Producer Price Index. Now, I don't want to make things too complicated, so let's just keep this basic. The producer price index shows when the cost to produce items increases or decreases, if it ever does. The consumer price index is highly manipulated and almost complete bullshit. But basically, they take a basket of goods, they look at the difference between what this same basket of goods would have cost a year ago to get the consumer price index inflation numbers the bullshit part is that they also assume if one thing is too pricey that you when you do your shopping you would choose a less expensive alternative or choose to have meat free days or something so it really can't be trusted at all now there are other price index also being reserve bank inflation or business inflation but basically there is wage growth adding to the producer price inf index there is imported inflation from costs of imported goods added on to it. There is domestic inflation by our own government inflating the monetary supply by borrowing. Then there is a squeeze on demand caused by shipping problems, which is caused by the producers having a crunch on their ability to produce, which is caused by everything from COVID lockdowns in China to lack of container ships to the cost of those container ships due to the price of oil and diesel, and of course the failed harvests and droughts and just the general shit last couple of years we've had here in general. So what is the point? Well the point is is that it's not going to get better anytime soon. In fact it's going to get worse. There is going to be less and less on the shelves and things are going to become impossible to find. If, if this government had any sense at all it would take us towards a wartime economy where everything we produce is sold locally first and everything we import we need to start to create here. Instead what is going to happen is we are going to be asked to go to war against Russia and maybe others for the sole purpose of planetary depopulation. Right, so then whose fault is inflation? No one's and everyone's. It was this global orchestrated event and set of agendas to implement that was a conscious decision of those who are ruling us as if we are cattle. This is the one world government system that globalization has steered us towards. Those who are not playing the game of globalization are currently our adversaries and if we took a step back and looked at it objectively we would recognize it's the western globalized system that has created this very problem for itself and that a reckoning was inevitable. Now this is not the individual politicians fault nor is it the fault of the people who voted for them. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to say we're on the wrong side either. I certainly do not want to become a communist country, nor do I want to be under the authoritarian yoke of dictatorship. We have to recognize that we allow successive governments to centralize power and take that power back. Which brings us to our next event. Over the last year, there have been upwards of a thousand protests across the world. People are realizing what is going on and are standing up in mass against the governments. But is it too late? As a prepping channel, what we are concerned about is what to do in a practical way uh, about what we see going on. 
So what can we do individually or collectively to try to get through the next set of events that is unfolding? Well, to answer that, I need to explain what I think the next set of events are going to be. So here in New Zealand, things will continue to go up in price. And to see what real on the ground inflation is, you can almost add the consumer price index inflation and the producer price index together and then add fuel cost rise to that and that's about the 25 to 35 percent inflation per year we are going to continue to see. Now those on low income jobs are getting almost a 5% wage increase, some of us are not getting any, and some of us who did not get a salary increase are looking to switch jobs to avoid going backwards in buying power. Now if you are one of those who saved well and played a good strategic game to get into property ownership, you are going to be punished also as to fight inflation the OCR will continue to rise and with it your mortgages interest rates will too. Here in New Zealand we do not have 20 or 30 year fixed mortgage rates. It's very rare to even have someone on a fixed home loan rate for five years. Many are facing more than a doubling of interest rate on their home loan and in the next few months I'm sure that this will squeeze buying power. Now consider landlords who do not have multiple properties, the mum and pop investors so to speak. They are going to be looking at increasing the rents to offset the increase in mortgage caused by interest rates. Also property rates have climbed dramatically in the last few years uh, also, and now that property values are starting to go down, do you think the rates that the councils charge will go down with them? Of course not. They will in fact go up because people want more to do the same job. Because they can buy less with what they get and what they had before. So the cost to the council to pay someone to keep the park looking nice or fix a water pipe is going to increase and so will rates which means so will rents and so on and so on it goes. If we are not extremely lucky we will end up in hyperinflation. There is a good argument to suggest that we just like Germany already have hyperinflation. They say the cost of bread rose by up to 66% there recently. So next here in New Zealand, as the OCR rises and sales weaken due to people's buying power being eroded and wage growth not continuing to keep pace with inflation, we will see some businesses start to flounder and then to fail. We will start to see a flood of unemployed into the job search market which will let employers start to offer less for jobs due to a glut of applicants to pick from. At this point those who are unemployed will start to take to the streets in protest and crime and violence will surge more than it already is followed by riots and then military on the streets and then we have the draft for World War 3 which will occur. Now it sounds like a grim time and it will be, which is why we have to be prepared. I might add here that none of this is new. It is almost exactly the same as what happened before World War II. But how do we prepare for this series of events to unfold? Well we have to get what we can while we can. First things first, go and find where your closest fresh water source is. Make sure you have items to carry that water home, even if you have to do so on foot or by bicycle, as fuel rationing goes hand in hand with war. Next, go to your local pet store this spring. Try to get a couple of hens. On that note, I wanted to add I did get my permit to keep my rooster, if only for a few months to replenish my flock. But in all seriousness, eggs have gone up over 100% and free range chickens pay for themselves very quickly. You can look on Trade Me for a farmer wanting to get rid of a few but it's a good easy production procurement that is well worthwhile. After this I would look at long term uh, carbs like rice and canned goods which should be followed up with protection. In what is coming I would say staying below the radar is as important as adequate protection 
and so I encourage you to look at a bow but with that said I'm not against firearms I just am against anything that puts you in a database or on a list the next thing is something that gets overlooked all too often prepare your skills first aid basic engineering woodworking the more knowledge and skills you have the better off you will be uh, when you have no one else to rely on except yourself with your gardens if you are not growing any food you should be even potting bags full of potting mix with vegetables inside but on that subject I will say there is a bit of trial and error uh, so if you have seeds and are waiting until you need to grow food to use them I believe this is a bad strategy and that you need to see what works where you are and get used to the work in order to grow so to grow what you want when you need it same for fruit trees uh, get started now and do not wait okay so now we have gotten that out of the way let's look closer to home at what's been going on firstly though there was something I wanted to draw your attention to and it involves the significant natural areas legislation and our current conservation land here in New Zealand so first the government looks into its current conservation land right it sees what we have and where it is in regards to earthbound resources then it looks at its target for conservation land moving forward next it goes to rezone certain areas of current conservation land so that other areas are conserved but those areas are not the original ones entirely no they have rezoned some conservation areas to not be conservation areas and looks to grant consents to mine for businesses and overseas investors so they can sell what can be extracted from the land but wait this doesn't fit with the environmental social governance targets for increasing conservation land so where does it look well it starts to look on your property then it conducts a survey to find significant natural areas on your land that it can then reclassify as conservation areas and at the end of its term will publish new figures on paper saying just how much land labor has now protected when in reality it was all just creative bookkeeping this is the theft and confiscation of your private land so they can sell areas with natural wealth to overseas investors for, to mine for profit so either they have just bought and paid off all other media or they just thought we were so stupid or preoccupied with the crisis of inflation that no one would notice anyway this is getting a bit off the normal flow so let's just push through jumping back now to the war between Russia and the West that is taking place in Ukraine there are some things that are developing that have come to light recently so recently in fact it is between when I started writing this and when I have time to record it all for you here so here goes some people believe mainly because they have been listening to local and mainstream media that Ukraine is pushing back and reclaiming territory taken by Russia in the months from February to now while there may be a hint of truth to this it does not do justice to the truth of the situation there consider this in the months from February to September that's roughly eight months plus a couple of weeks to take us to current time Russia has caused just a wholesale but strategic destruction of Ukraine they have surrounded parts cut other parts off blockaded ports and done so while the entire West is feeding weapons uh, and soldiers and money to Ukraine the West has sanctioned Russia stolen billions of dollars of Russian money that it paid Russia for natural gas which is in effect means they stole gas for years and now Russia has effectually drained the West of most of its stockpile of older weapons it's caused rampant spending which has exacerbated inflationary pressures while the Russian ruble is stronger than it was before the sanctions Russia is now burning 10 million dollars per day of natural gas because what they supplied to Germany and Europe before was not paid for and even the payment for prior vast quantities was stolen so 
I cannot see Russia starting to supply the EU anytime soon. Russia is now working on annexing parts of Ukraine that they have taken with force, as it has realized Ukraine will draft all of its men and women before it concedes, so forcibly making the population whose women face being drafted starting in October to vote to join Russia instead of fighting is a rather clever move. The next part of the picture to look at is the type of weapons being used in the Russian arsenal. It is weapons that are suitably advanced, but it is produced from within. Everything they are using there to such great effect is made there. America does have more advanced military, but not just because it spends more on it. Keep in mind, here more money does not mean better results. America has lost every ground war since World War II. Now that is a bold strategy. Uh, because as they lost, they also won. They did exactly what the Vikings did in 900 AD. They went in, they harassed, they caused destruction, and they looted wealth out of areas they were at war with. That is America's way of war. Also consider, America spends way more on defense than Russia does, perhaps even more than Russia and China combined. But where they are spending that money they have a lot of military personnel that are paid a lot as well as a lot of bases that require maintenance when nasa wanted to find a solution to pens not writing in space they spent a million dollars on a pen where russia just used a pencil so my point here is that military spend means nothing at all if you don't have the production and the chips that go into America's military, the most advanced ones, are made in the factories in Taiwan. And no promise of security to Taiwan from America is going to help when China enters the fray and blockades Taiwan and forces the One China Two Systems policy to once again become the One China One System. Next, if you are still listening, I want to know now I want you to now consider how many items you buy from factories in China and think carefully what the repercussions are if we, as in New Zealand, are at odds with both China and Russia. Think what will happen to the, value, the availability of those items and how much of that gas and oil are going to cost when the tanks and aircraft carriers fly, roll and sail day and night. If you ask me for my opinion, on the correct strategic move given these developments and the facts that a worldwide depression is on the cards in the near future as well as a prolonged world war i believe the right move for new zealand would be a nationalist strategy and isolation we should immediately vote to become a republic which takes us away from our obligations under a part of the commonwealth and the un we need to ditch the TPPA, or Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, and also sign single trade agreements with countries. This would allow us to become neutral, like Switzerland is. This will allow us to trade and be traded with, but would not allow us to send military forces or military aid. Instead, our military would become defenders of the homeland only. This, I believe, is the correct move for us. How would we do it? scrap the TPPA, leave the Commonwealth and any other alliances with all countries. This would also help to get us away from the World Economic Forum's agendas that we are going along with all too readily. So then, what is the point of this video? The point is that Russia is not losing the war, it is winning it. It cost Russia only $6 billion to destroy the fighting force of a country that was well armed and had 50 million people. And the backing of all of NATO and the EU and the UN as well. Not only are they at a point where they are now able to city by city, province by province, start to annex its territory, but also the EU is about to enter a winter where its inflation and lack of energy will cause it to be at odds with its own population. We are starting to have a larger and larger gaps in our supply chain. The people here are waking up to the fact of what is going on. If you believed what happens over there does not affect here, you about, you're about to be rudely awakened. Right, 
Well, that was cheerful, wasn't it? I believe we should not have disillusions. If you have a garden, the time to put potatoes in is a few weeks away only, and successive plantings are a good way to get a staggered harvest. I'm about to do some potatoes and kumara in one bed, some quick greens to take me to the time for corn in another, and open corn in the greenhouse also. If you can stock up on canned goods, look at mylar bags, oxygen absorbers and vacuum sealing away your rice. 100 kilos of rice at this point is not hoarding, it is a prudent purchase, as the price of rice is rising quickly. Before we come to an end on today's video, and when I say today's video, by now you're realizing I'm able at the moment to make one of these videos about every two weeks, I wanted to talk to you about financial preparedness. As you know, I'm not a financial advisor, and you do need to do your own research, but what I am telling you to do now is important. If you do one thing, I want you to open a new bank account. You should absolutely not have all your money in one account or even with one bank. You need to hold some cash and have multiple banks. If you do not, you are likely to lose all of your money to bail-ins. Kiwi Bank being brought by the government was the first rattles of this dying system and, and as interest rates now look to move up again and again, this situation is going to get a lot worse. If you can get a side hustle, look at a new job or a second job, do so, but just be as careful as possible and keep cash where there is no power because you won't be buying with cards if there is no power. And so now we come to the crux of our video today, the culmination and summation being entirely and ultimately reduced to the blunt force in your face reality of what is coming and what is. That is, war is upon us. The harsh reality of millions dying in a global conflagration and millions more to starvation when the war turns towards food, the inability of our local systems to cope while we send homegrown produce and soldiers to one of the soon to be many battlefields and fronts of the world over. Mark my words, the years between now and 2032 will be harsh. The time to take matters into your own hands is now. Do whatever you can to secure your food for your family, legally of course, there is already enough violence and robbery going on, but also we need to be looking into home defense and security. Things like adding fencing to your property or razor wire on top of those fences, if they are easy to climb, where you are makes a difference too. The places with the lowest populations are going to be less dangerous. Those of you in the big cities, I hope you are prepared or have a group of close friends and a plan of what to do in an emergency. Are you bugging in or are you bugging out? With the ending of the COVID restrictions, it appears that some parts of legislation have been dropped, but the framework is still in place. The preparations set out an almost permanent fixture, ready to be recalled into active service when any government deems it necessary. Just as I said would happen when a government gets power, it does not give it back without keeping a way for it to return at a later point. I sincerely hope the constitution of our youth and populace during these uncertain and turbulent times is equal to the task and that whoever you are listening to me today you got a better understanding about what is going on in the world and what I think is coming next and what to do to try and insulate yourself from it. If you have liked this video give me a like and subscribe if you aren't already and commit and comment anything you want to discuss or want me to look into uh, and yeah, just take care and get prepared and I'll see you all in the next video.